Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Review Video, topic 6.5, fossil fuels. So we've been talking about fossil fuels in previous videos, but I do want to take a second and kind of explain how this works. So you're, you're probably going to tell yourself, no, Mr. V, don't talk about chemistry. Um, this is environmental science. I don't need chemistry. You do, actually. <laughs> um, the, um, you know, the way this works is if you think back to your chemistry course, there are certain types of reactions, and the one that we get um, energy from is going to be from a combustion reaction. So think about respiration. Respiration is a combustion reaction. You consume some sort of a fuel and turn that into sugars, or, carb or you have sugars from carbon, um, or carbon from sugars, and you combine it with your oxygen, and then you release CO2 and water, um, and you're getting heat, and, and we don't re produce light, but um, in the combustion reactions we're talking about um, for energy, these do end up producing light as well, okay? And so the big idea is that heat is the key. We need heat to be able to run a power plant, and a power plant is not a fancy process. All it does is finds a way to boil water. If you can find a way to boil water, that's going to be how these power plants work. And there's many ways we do this, but fossil fuels um, are the main purpose, of, at least of a, for a power plant itself. Okay, so if you look at it right here, here's an example of coal. Okay, Now for coal, the thing we want the most of is we want steam. Okay, So if you look right here, they take this pulverized coal, they break it down to make it smaller so that it burns faster and hotter and they put it in a boiler where they set it on fire. And the coal has a bunch of water right above it, and that is then turned into steam, okay? The steam is then pushed through where there is a turbine, and a turbine then turns a generator, okay? And the generator then is sent to a transformer, which basically, not a transformer like uh, Megatron, um, but it turns it into a more usable form of energy, and that is then sent out to the rest of the world. And of course, the water itself is recycled. So um, you end up with uh, cool water being pumped in, right, from a reservoir to cool the machine down and make sure that nothing overheats. And then that water itself is condensed and brought back down, and that condensed steam is pushed back through and reboiled, and you end up doing the whole process again. And of course, you do need some water to be pumped in. So this is from Georgia Power. Um, and so the idea is that is going to be one of the downsides of using this. Now, most fossil fuel resources use the exact same process. You just change this section right here where it says coal and the boiler, what is being burned. So if we're talking about nuclear power, instead of a boiler with um, uh, coal, you're going to have control rods with a nuclear reaction, which we'll go over later. Um, you can do the same thing with natural gas, right? You, bore, you burn natural gas to produce the steam and so on and so forth. So this can be changed out, uh, and this can actually, this actually is done the same way with renewable sources. It's always about turning a turbine and a generator. So if you can remember that, you're probably going to see these diagrams or diagrams like these on the AP exam, or you may be asked to um, you know, uh, interpret the information from a diagram like this, uh, or just to know the steps. So it's important to know those steps when it comes to coal or any other type of power plant. Okay. Now, what are the problems with fossil fuels is that you have to deal with extraction, right? You have to get them out in many ways, right? You're going to end up dealing with drilling, of course, if you're talking about oil, where it's a hole is drilled and then pumped out. That's what these are on the bottom. Or you may just have to mine for it and break it, break land apart to be able to get to the source. That's going to be um, how we get coal or um, things like that, or solid portions out, right? And then, of course, natural gas, we've been using this process the last 20 years or so, um, or beyond that, actually, uh, of hydraulic fracturing. Right. And hydraulic fracturing, it ha it's in the last 20 years has boomed, but it's a very complex process to get natural gas out of the ground. So here's how hydraulic fracturing work works. You take this, um, typically it's like an oil shale, so it's part liquid, part gas, but we want the gas. And so what happens is you drill in there, and it's called hydraulic fracturing because you send water down in there and you purposely cause minor earthquakes. You break the ground. That ground is then broken apart, um, and there's gas that's stuck in there that we can then um, t 
take out from there and we can then use that natural gas. So this can lead to groundwater contamination if it's not properly um, monitored and maintained. And it does release volatile organic compounds. You need certain what's called fracking fluid to be able to push that down. So it's not just pure water they're pushing down. So you are using water, but you have to put fracking fluid in there to help it uh, make sure that it doesn't uh, stick to the pipelines or corrode any of the metal or things like that. So that can end up being released with these, uh, with this form of energy extraction. So here's some more resources if you want to get some more details on those. So hopefully these will be helpful and hopefully this was helpful. So thank you.